Hey guys, hey guys, welcome to Fuji Tech Time. I'm David, and that's Caleb right there. And this right here is the DJI Mavic Mini. Now, the Mavic Mini is a cool little drone. It's a great drone for the price that it is. Uh, but a lot of you guys were really upset with one of the features that didn't exist on the Mavic Mini when it came out. And no, it wasn't 4K. No, it wasn't uh, raw photos. No, it wasn't a lot of things. What it was was you couldn't fly it in DJI's blue authentication zones. They didn't have the ability to be able to unlock those zones in the software when it came out. How Now, DJI has resolved that yesterday in a firmware update that just came out. That is firmware version 01.00.0400. And we're going to talk about that, but there are some other details about this firmware that I think are really important, and I don't want them to get glossed over while we get to that. So hang on just one second while we talk about those, and then we're going to come back to the unlock for the Mavic Mini. So first off, there are two new safety features that have been built in. And honestly, I'm really surprised that these two features didn't exist in other DJI drones previous to this. But I really think that these two features will be coming to other drones very, very soon. I would not be surprised to see these two things get added to DJI Go 4 in the very near future. Now, what, they, what are they? They are they have added a feature that disables takeoff when the GPS signal is weak. That is less than eight GPS satellites locked in and the environment light is not sufficient. This feature can be disabled manually, requires DJI Fly version, version 1.0.4 or later. Now, why is that important? That is important because I've actually seen a lot of people report in uh, Facebook groups and forums that they have actually lost their drones because of this exact feature not existing. They weren't aware, and keep in mind that the Mavic Mini is a entry-level drone. It's not necessarily people who've been flying for a long time, although there are some people like myself who really enjoy the Mavic Mini, but there is a lot of people coming to the hobby of flying drones that haven't necessarily been around it, and they don't know necessarily about GPS satellite signals getting locked in and darkness and the combination of those two things are really a recipe for losing your drone. So if it's low light or and there's no GPS satellites, well, you probably really, unless you know what you're doing, don't want to be flying your drone. And so now DJI has actually made it one step harder for you to get your drone into a situation that's going to be really hard for you to control. But they actually have made it really easy to kind of get around that. So on the screen here, you'll be able to see uh, what you see. So you'll get an error message up in the top left saying that uh, saying an error message and so you click on that and then it'll pop up another screen with more details next to it and give you kind of a warning about it and then there's an unlock button right beside that and you can click that unlock and then you can go ahead and take off with no gps satellites and low light if you really want to but i'll really caution you they're making it a little bit more difficult because <laughs> you have a good chance of losing your drone if the wind's happening or you don't, you're not real confident on the sticks. So just use that with caution, but I'm really happy to see DJI implement this for the Mavic Mini. Uh, I like this extra safety feature and I look forward to them adding it to future drones. Now, DJI isn't saying they're going to add it to future drones, but I'm kind of predicting maybe they will. Now they've added a second similar type of uh, feature as well. They say they've added a requirement for compass calibration before takeoff when the environment light is not sufficient and the compass experiences interference. Now, again, those are three of the most important pieces of how the system, how the drone is able to control itself. GPS, the compass, and the visual sensors down here looking straight down. So in this case, this message is in regards to compass calibration and magnetic interference. So I did a little test. I, I, I was having a hard time figuring out a way to, to be able to test this out. So I grabbed a cast iron pan, set it on that, and then I covered the drone with a towel. And thus we had a compass error and darkness, and I was able to see this message. So you can see that here on the screen. This again is really important because if you're magnetic interference and there's low light, then again, you, it's just a high risk situation. And so 
you really want to be careful in that situation. And so DJI is just making it that kind of one step further, one step harder for you to, to get yourself in a bad situation. And my recommendation is if you have a magnetic or compass error on the screen saying that you need to recalibrate, the first step you should do is you should get away from that magnetic interference that's causing you problems. Get away from that magnetic interference, any steel, anything that's going to cause problems with your compass get away from that and then if you you know that you're away from magnetic interference and you're still getting a compass error then go ahead and do a, a, a compass calibration so i'm glad to see they've added this new safety feature again just gives that little extra margin of of uh, uh trying to make sure that you don't get yourself into a bad situation now they have added like four other items to the to the list of what's new i don't think that these are all that important uh in my my humble opinion uh but maybe that's just because i haven't experienced them for someone who is experiencing them maybe they're important but i'll just read through them super quick adjusted flight altitude and distance in payload mode payload mode is like if you have uh, uh, the, the propeller guards on, it's extra weight, so it limits the distance and the altitude that you can go with the drone. They've adjusted that in some way. They don't say whether they've adjusted it to be able to go further away or uh, they've made it so that it has to stay closer. I'm not really sure. If you guys know for sure, leave a comment down below to share, uh, share your knowledge. Uh, they've added a warning prompt for battery cycles. I have no idea what that means. Uh, they've reduced noise during self-diagnostics after powering on. Uh, I haven't really noticed any difference, but quite honestly, I never really noticed it uh, being noisy before. Uh, there is kind of a, a, a beeping noise that it kind of, uh, when, it, when it first powers on, but I don't know if that's what they're talking about. And then they fixed an issue where uh, linking was abnormal in some regions, and I think maybe that was in relation to uh, the remote control to the drone. I've, I've read some people online uh, were running into some, some linking issues, uh, so I, I, hopefully that is resolving that. Now, again, before we get to the update around uh, unlocking blue authorization zones, uh, let's just talk about the firmware update. So there's two different ways that you can do the firmware update. I personally did it through the DJI Fly app. It automatically prompted me for telling me that there was a firmware update to be able to download. I clicked on that, it downloaded it. And then uh, I, and I did that actually just on my phone without it even connected to anything. Uh, then after it downloaded it, I uh, connected to my RC and the drone, and then it prompted me to be able to install it. It probably took about nine or 10 minutes for that whole install process. So make sure that you have a uh, full battery on both your remote control and your drone. It's gonna do the firmware update for both of those. And in fact, it will also do a firmware update for your battery. So if you have more than one battery, you'll need to do the firmware update process for each subsequent battery. It's much shorter because it just needs to do the firmware update just for the battery for subsequent ones. But just be aware of that if you have multiple batteries. But the other way to do the firmware updates is to do it uh, via DJI Assistant 2, connect the, uh, your drone to uh, the USB here to your computer and run the DJI Assistant 2 for Mavic software and then you can do the firmware update there as well. Now to actually the star of the show, the, the feature that you guys are all looking for is uh, to be able to unlock blue authorization zone. So let's talk just for a second about what a blue authorization zone is. So I'll put on the screen here a little map that shows uh, uh, some details about authorization zones, about the different zones that DJI has for their geofencing solution. I really highly recommend that you go check out dji.com slash flysafe. I'll leave a link down below for you guys to go check that. Uh, and you can find all, all these details and a lot more, but basically there's different areas that are just, the closer you get to an airport for the most part, a, a, especially a larger airport, the more kind of hoops you have to jump through. So uh, there are warning zones, there's enhanced warning zones, there's authorization zones, and then there's restricted areas. Now, with this new update, you can get access to res red restricted areas but it's going to be much more difficult. You have to go through a custom unlock on the DJI website to do that. Uh, and quite honestly, unless you really, really know what you're doing, you shouldn't even attempt to try and do that sort of an unlock because those are areas that are generally speaking really close to airports and you probably shouldn't be flying there unless I get, like I said, you really, really know what you're doing, but you have to prove to DJI that you have legal authorization to fly there anyways. So they're just making it for more hoops for you to jump through. The, the more kind of serious it is, right? So authorization zones are kind of like a, probably a 15 to 30 second process that you have to go through. Uh, 
there is actually a bug in the implementation in DJI Fly 1.0.4 right now, uh, and that is that you can only start the unlock process by doing your, your sticks, doing the down and in or the down and out on the, on the sticks. Uh, just pressing the takeoff button on the Fly app is not actually going to work as of this recording. Uh, when I tested it, you couldn't press that button and make it take off. Try and launch. So the first thing we're gonna do is click the button there and press take off and nothing happened with the drone. You had to use the sticks down and in uh, to be able to start the motors and then launch it kind of manually. Uh, and when you do that process, it actually pops up on your screen a prompt to initiate the whole unlock process. In this case, this uh, is a, a, an area that's near a small airport, so it's still class G airspace. I'm legally, uh, whether I'm a wreck or flying as 107, which I am, uh, I'm able to legally fly in that area, but in terms of that particular location, I probably, unless I had a really specific reason to fly there, I probably wouldn't just because it's not necessarily safe. So uh, you just need to be safe about where you choose to fly. And uh, let's cut out there, go check it out, and uh, we'll be right back. Hey guys, so I am out here. The wind is blowing, it's super cold, uh, but I am in a geo zone. I'm in a DJI blue authorization zone. So we'll pull this up on the screen here and we can see in our screen here that there is a blue strip along there that is an authorization zone and on the screen it shows a geo zone here you can see that we're in a blue authorization zone there and if we come back we can see that it is showing uh, it is in a restricted zone please check map to find recommended zone so we're actually going to go through and check the unlock procedure for this authorization zone. So uh, let's go ahead and try and launch. So the first thing we're gonna do is click the button there and press take off and nothing happened with the drone. So uh, that's not working actually. So let's try it using the stick. So on the screen, we can use our sticks here, bring them down and in. Okay, so when we press them down and in, you'll see that it popped up a screen here. You'll see on my screen, there's now a screen that allows me to be able to do an unlock. So it says aircraft in authorization zone, unlock to take off, and it tells me the zone that it's in. I'm gonna press unlock here. And now I've done this once before and it goes through the process and asks you for your phone number. And so you put in your phone number and you hit submit and it will send you a text with a six digit code that you then have to enter in. It's kind of like a two factor authentication, not just what you know, but also what you have. You have to have your phone with you. And so it's just kind of a, a double check on things. So then I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. I agree that I am qualified to fly in this area, agree to assume full liability for flying in this area, and I agree to upload DJI device hardware information. So there is an aircraft serial number, a flight controller serial number. And actually, I'm not gonna fly because, uh, I don't know, you guys probably can't see this, but there is an airplane flying right up there. It's probably 300 feet up. And that's why this is an authorization zone because there's an airport right over there. Now, I'm not gonna actually fly here because, because of exactly that reason. I just came here specifically to be able to demonstrate this for you guys. All right, so I'm gonna hit okay on that unlocking successful if this actually works so now i'm going to do this and we'll see that my propellers are now spinning and uh, i'm going to just go up just a little bit but i'm not actually going to take off so i'll just jump up in there just a little bit like that and then we'll just go ahead and land right there and uh, we are good to go Okay, so that was just demonstrating using the unlock feature in the new DJI Fly app as well as the uh, new firmware that was just released to do a unlock to be able to fly in a blue authorization zone. Super easy to do, so uh, just make sure you're being safe, make sure you're being legal, and uh, get out there and go fly it. Hope you guys found this useful, and uh, hope to see you guys on another one soon. Ciao!